Hi, um, I guess what we're going to do, we're going to kick off the unit on trigonometry with uh, giving you some basic ideas about some special angles. Here I'm just going to draw the best x-axis I can. Drag it a few more times. Okay, so this is my, I'll call that my x-axis, and my y-axis I'm simply going to, I guess, use the line that's already dark. And I'm going to go from here to, say from here, up to here. So, here we go. There's my y-axis. A circle, especially a unit circle, a unit circle, by the way, has a radius of 1. So, right? A unit circle has a radius of 1. That's why we call it a unit circle. And when a, when a um, circle has a radius of 1, it has some very special properties. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. Um, I'm going to do some other things and just get some other basic terminology out. I'm not going to try for a unit circle. This one is... This one I'm drawing looks like it's about five of these grid marks. So when I do that, well, with any luck, and if this compass doesn't slip on me, all of the, all of the places that it crosses on, on all four quadrants on the positive and negative axes of both axes should be five units in every direction from the center. The center is zero zero the radius is five and so you know we can we can say you know for example this circle contains the point zero five sorry five zero negative five zero zero five and zero negative five so you, you can see here that you know there's a lot of recognizable points that it does contain um, what I want to do is I want to describe a, just one or two angles and give them names. So if we draw an angle, just some angle, what well, doesn't matter what, I'm just drawing a, a line from the center to some point on the circle, doesn't matter what it is, and the customary thing to do is if we're measuring an angle we measure it from the positive x-axis and when we do the angle theta is what we we often give the angle a Greek letter like theta or alpha or beta or whatever and this angle is in standard position so angles in standard position are measured from the positive x-axis going counterclockwise okay they actually go in the counterclockwise direction so as as this arm moves well we got to give it a name <laughs> okay so we're we're calling this angle theta an angle in uh, in standard position because it's being measured from the positive x to whatever the heck this is well let's give them names instead of saying whatever the heck this is, or thingamajig, or whatever, let's give them names. So this thingamajig I've been referring to is called the terminal arm. It's the terminal arm of the angle. Well, what is, where is it measured from? Well, an angle is measured from the initial arm. So, as you can see, an angle in standard position is when the initial arm happens to lie on the x-axis and the terminal arm is somewhere else and the measurement proceeds counterclockwise from the initial arm to the terminal arm. Is there anything stopping you from measuring clockwise? Of course not. Uh, there isn't, but then that is not an angle in standard position. That's all you need to recognize. That is a, a couple of things. A couple of things to know, because I I will be referring to angles in standard position quite a bit, and you need to know what I'm talking about. What if you have an angle greater than 90 degrees? 
Okay. First of all, okay, let's measure this angle. Let's just, you know, just to get that out of the way. Uh, I'm going to measure whatever this angle is. So we do that using a protractor. I've got a rather minimalist protractor. It doesn't have a, a lot of clues as to how to proceed with the measurement, but you do your best. Uh, my terminal arm doesn't go far enough, but it's it's almost 40. It's about 38 degrees. So I'll say approximately 38 degrees. Um, well, okay. Now you can actually you can actually just find out a random angle somewhere else. Let's try an angle greater than 90 degrees. You know that over here, this positive y-axis represents an angle of 90 degrees. And that's because you're measuring from the initial arm counterclockwise, and when you go 90 degrees, you actually hit the y-axis. And when you go 180 degrees, you're hitting the negative x-axis. And 270 degrees, you're hitting the negative y-axis. And then finally, 360 degrees, you're back where you started. Okay, but that's the way it goes. It goes in a counterclockwise fashion. So, all right, so let's say that we have now this new terminal arm over here, and we have this new angle that we need to measure. We'll call it alpha, okay? We'll give it the Greek letter alpha. Now, let's just bring that over there, make it very careful, and um, okay. So it looks like, well, if I go this way, I measure this this guy along here, I say 53 degrees. But if I go here, I know i got to read, because it's greater than 90 degrees, I can say 123 degrees or so. Or f I guess 52 versus 123. So we can say this is approximately 123 degrees. But then you also have this angle too. The, the measurement between here and here, between the negative x-axis and here, obviously is not the obviously is not the angle that we just measured in standard position, but it is what is known as a reference angle. And it happens to be 180 minus the angle we were measuring. 180 minus alpha in this case. It's the acute angle between the terminal arm and the x-axis of an angle in standard position. So if here the angle is in standard position, but the acute angle is the reference angle and the x-axis, which happens to be the negative x-axis. Okay, so that's a reference angle. Reference angles are 180 minus the angle in standard position. That circle is getting kind of crowded, so let's just draw a different one. Here's a y-axis and the x-axis, which I'll draw presently and make sure it falls on a grid, grid mark and then we go this way. Okay. This time I'm going to draw a unit circle. A lot of unit circle has a lot of pretty neat properties which I'd like to share with you. Once again I will just put this in here. Now I'm going to give it an arbitrary radius rather than taking the grid marks seriously I will say that the grid marks are each equal to decimal point two. So then that means that five grid marks will be one. And let's see if we can actually draw a nice circle with radius one. Now this circle is just as big, but I'm just going to change the scale on the x-axis. As you can see here, we have a nice circle. Well, all right. Let's now draw an angle, any angle. So basically the idea is this is a unit circle and that means that it has a lot of different properties that I think merit special attention in grade 11 and in grade 12. First of all, a unit circle crosses the x-axis at the point 1, 0, but it also crosses at negative 1, 0. Okay? And here we have the point zero, 1. Now, as I'm talking, remember everything I said about angles in standard position. This is super important. 
Okay, so here are our radii. The radi radius is one. Let's just do something here. Uh, I'm going to measure an, an, an angle of a specific amount. Okay, and um, let's see if we can do this. Okay. I'm going to make, I don't know, make one that's 30 degrees. I was going to cross that point over here. 30 degrees. So I know that the line has to go past here. So drawn from the circle, this angle is 30 degrees. Now, if I drop a perpendicular from, you see where it, see where it hits the, see where the 30 degree angle hits the unit circle? It'd be interesting to know what the points are there. I can drop a perpendicular here and notice that what I have is a right angle triangle. Okay. Now, that right angle triangle has special properties. Here are your first things that you need to know about sine, cosine, and tan. The first thing to do is to talk about cos theta. So cos theta is equal to, as you know, the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. It's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Well, the adjacent is some change in x, isn't it? Delta x. And it extends from here to the origin. So it's adjacent over hypotenuse, which is roughly saying x. And what is the hypotenuse? Well, it's this. It's the radius of the unit circle. Oh, what's the radius of the unit circle? Oh, didn't we say it was 1? So it's x divided by 1. Well, that means cosine is only equal to uh, x. Ah, and that's part of the magic of the unit circle. We'll also discover that sine theta also has a similar wonderful property of being opposite over hypotenuse, right? And that's opposite is this little delta y thing over here. Right? So that's y over, right? Opposite is parallel to the, is this length here, is the y value going from the x-axis up to the point, divided by the hypotenuse, which we just said was 1. So it's y divided by 1, which is y. So this point here on the unit circle, ladies and gentlemen, is the point cos theta, sine theta. So that's that point on the unit circle. Well we can do better than just cos theta sine theta because we know what the angle is. We don't have to say theta because the angle is 30. This is the cosine of 30 and the sine of 30 degrees. And of course you can find these things out on your Calculator. So cos 30. By the way, guys and gals, make sure you don't have radians. You want your calculator set for degrees for this uh, for this course. Uh, you will have radians soon enough in advanced functions. Cosine of 30 degrees. So what's that? Ah, root 3 over 2. So this is the point root 3 over 2, comma, what's sine of 30? Let's go sine of 30, and that is 1 half. So this is the point root 3 over 2, 1 half, or if you like, the cos of 30, sine of 30. Well, you know, any point, any point you like that falls on the unit circle will simply be cos theta, sine theta. They will all be like that. Every point on the unit circle would be the point cos theta sine theta. That is one of the magical properties of the unit circle. The magic is broken, no more magic, if the radius is not equal to 1. The radius has to be equal to 1 in order to get, in order to benefit 
from the fact that every point on the unit circle is cos theta sine theta. For angle, and by the way, this forces the angles to be in standard position. We can only speak of theta in this context only if the angles are in standard position. It cannot happen any other way. Obviously, some of those trig ratios, because the points are cos theta sine theta, you can actually make sense of the points we already have written out. Here's the point one zero lying on the x-axis. Well, this must be, well, what angle is this? If it lies on the x-axis, the angle must be zero degrees. So the cos of zero is one, and the sine of zero is zero. Okay, let's look over here. The, co the cos of, what's this? 90 degrees, because we got to go this way, right? So the cos of 90 degrees is zero. The sine of 90 degrees is one. The cos of, what's this? 180 degrees. The cos of 180 is negative one. The sine of 180 is zero. This has to be the number zero and negative one for the y value. Okay, so the cos of 270 degrees is zero. The sine of 270 is minus one. And when we get back here to 360, we're, it's the same thing as for zero degrees. As you can see here, you already have some things built in. Cos of 30 works out to be a nice angle. So does the sine of 30. Um, the way I remember these is that, you know, I used to talk, uh, well, I, I still speak of, an, uh, of a triangle called a 1, 2, root 3 triangle. So we have a 90 degree angle here. The shortest side is given a 1. The longest side is given a 2. And the other arm of the, the other leg of the triangle is given the square root of 3. The smallest angle is 30 degrees. And the largest angle, that's not 90, is given 60 degrees. So you can actually memorize using SOHCAHTOA, using the fact that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and of course tan, tan theta is opposite over adjacent, and that's y over x. Okay, for tan, tan, tan of 60 is root three over one, or just root three. 30 has a cosine. Remember 30, this is, this is the hypotenuse for 30. This side, because it's touching the angle 30, is actually the adjacent side because it's adjacent to the 30 degree angle. The one over here is opposite the 30 degree angle, right? So for cosine, it's root three over two for cosine of 30. It's one over root two because it's opposite over hypotenuse, one over root two for the sine of 30. Okay, now the other thing I was saying was about 60 degrees. Well, 60 degrees, these switch around. The cosine of 60 is one half and the sine of 60 is root three over two. It just switches around for 60 degrees. Okay, so, and I find that rather than memorizing the angles in some kind of dry sort of listy sort of way, I, I prefer to draw myself a picture and I never forget this. I never forget what my ratios are and I never need to look anything up. And in fact, I don't even need to make cheat notes because I got this memorized, but this is a standard angle. Uh, these are just ways of memorizing your standard angles. Of course, there's another one, another one for memorizing your standard angles. There's one more triangle that you need to know. And that's the one for 45 degrees. We have another right angle triangle, but as you can see here, we have, well, that's 45 degrees. This is 45 degrees. This side is one, this side is one. So that means that we, when we take the square root of that sum, we get the square root of two by the Pythagorean theorem. So the sine of 45 degrees and the cosine of 45 degrees is one over root two. Okay, and that's how you memorize that. 
Of course, the tangent of 45 degrees is 1 over 1. It's just 1. The tangent of 45 degrees is 1. The cosine function, as well as the sine function, never go higher than 1 and never go below negative 1. Tangent, on the other hand, can go to positive infinity along the y values or to negative infinity. There's no limitation, there's no restriction in its, in, its, um, in its range. However, its domain is restricted in a lot of places. Uh, for example, the tan of 90 degrees is undefined. And that means, by extension, the tan of 270 is also undefined. Let's say that we, let's say that we picked a random uh, one of these points, one of these multiples of 30. Uh, let's say 240 degrees. Well, 240 degrees falls somewhere around here. Like, it's really 270 minus 30, isn't it? Like, 240, 270, this is 270, so 270 minus 30 is here. I'll call this 240. I'm not really going to measure it. But this will be the cosine of 240 and the sine of 240. The other thing is, that the, what's the reference angle? The reference angle is this, right? So here we have 240 degrees. The reference angle now is, well, okay, this is 90 degrees. This whole thing is 90. I said that this difference is 30, so this reference angle is 60 degrees. So we actually use as our reference angle 60 degrees, which means that that idea of the cos, the cos of 60 degrees being 1 half and the sine of 60 being root 3 over 2, root 3 over 2, actually works here. The only problem is we have to think of two things that changes the situation. What quadrant, well actually one thing that changes the situation that we're in, one extra thing, and that is what quadrant are we in? So in the first quadrant, we didn't have to worry about negative values, but now that we're in the third quadrant, we know that both the x and the y values are both negative. So for, just to remember that 60 degrees, the cos is 1 half, right? Cos is 1 half, and the sine is root 3 over 2, okay. So that means that in the third quadrant, this point here must be uh, cosine negative one half and negative root three over two. Okay, that's this point here, that that point right there. Okay, and this will tell you um, this will tell you the sine and the cosine of of an angle that's somewhere else. Okay, uh, of course we have to take into consideration the reference angle. And that gives us a big clue because we know what th we know what the angles are for 30, 60, and 45. As long as we know those three angles and the angles in the first quadrant, the one for zero and the one for 90, we can actually go anywhere in the circle we like. The only thing we have to worry about is asking ourselves, okay, so the angle is, say, 120. Okay, so what quadrant are we in? Well, we know that 120 is less than 180 it's greater than 90, so we must be in quadrant 2. If we're in quadrant 2, then y is positive and x is negative. So you just got to remember where, you know, the, the half the battle here is not just memorizing the exact values of the angles, but where do you put the signs when you go one full trip around the circle?